Racism, bigotry, hatred, words that describe a festering problem in America and right here in Michigan. It's always been here with us throughout history, only now it's boiling over the surface. So tonight we wanted to show you some of the methods being used to teach a new generation tools of tolerance for people who are different. America has seen its first black president, the first black and Asian female vice president. Yet the day after Georgia elected its first black and Jewish senators, we witnessed a violent and deadly insurrection at the U.S. Capitol building in Washington, D.C. Here at home, a plot to kill Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer. 13 members of two militia groups who are preparing to kidnap and possibly kill me. But experts say long before these moments, however ugly in our history, domestic terrorism centered around racism was on the rise at a fever pitch. And in the last four years, the American Jewish community has experienced an increased level of harassment, vandalism, and even assault than in the past 40 years. So why such an uptick? Some experts argue it became okay to take the lid off the sewer. With popular figures having a greater megaphone than ever and making it acceptable to say certain things out loud or even making it acceptable to present um, alternative facts. Words matter and the hurtful ones are being learned by our children. As a seventh grader at a middle school in the Birmingham School District, kids began making fun of Kennedy Banks' hair. I like you better with straight hair. I don't like your curls. They'll say, they'll call us like blackies. Then a KKK photo from a school field trip began circulating. We did a story on it on Channel 7. What do you remember that experience being like? I just remember it just being very just heartbreaking. She left the district in 10th grade. A lot of people were very comfortable being openly racist and openly ignorant. People were saying black lives don't matter. Jody Middleton is a principal at Auburn Elementary School in Auburn Hills. She says they have undergone cultural competency training. It's deep work. I mean, we have to do that as the educators in the building. We've been doing that. It's it's hard, very personal work. She says no one is lashing out at her school and they are talking about what they are seeing. I I had a third grader uh, the day after the insurrection state to her class that she was really upset to see all of the angry people. Middleton's given the language to express their feelings. They are better able to regulate their emotions. Brianna Murphy and Stephen McGregor, two teachers from Ypsilanti, told me hate began invading their school. These students coming up behind these young ladies who were um, ladies of color and uh, waving a Trump sign and shouting Trump, Trump, Trump behind him and stuff like this. Remember in 2016, the gorilla Harambe was killed at the Cincinnati Zoo when a child fell into the exhibit? People would just use that against the black girls at our school. Tell me exactly what would they do? They would just cause Harambe, they would do the grunts, the, um, the walk that he did, they would do it to try to intimidate us. But that was the last straw and it was the students who approached teachers asking for help. When kids themselves are asking for something and take a voice for themselves, we, it was amazing to me that we listened. They ushered in the program, No Place for Hate by the Anti-Defamation League. And I'm willing to have those courageous conversations. Um, and I think if more and more of our teachers are willing to have conversations about race, that we can make a difference in our school. Their work was not just centered around race, but also gender and classism. Sometimes when you just hear what's happening at home, that's when things like white supremacy wins because you think it's the only way. Finally, I asked, why do you care so much? I have to change the world to be a better place for my kids too. You know, I was so impressed by the teachers from Lincoln High in Ypsilanti. Brianna was one of them. They listened to the students and tackled hate head on. And the teachers told me they gained great professional development and growth as well. And the students felt empowered to make change for the better. That one young girl said after that incident with kids calling her Harambe, after going through some training, kids actually walked up to her and said, I apologize. I'm sorry. I didn't know I hurt you so much. So Dave, they, the kids themselves were making change right along with their teachers. Listening and having those important conversations, so very important. Very, very, for a new generation, for sure.